Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we are looking... I, I want to look at some more tech tree ships, honestly. I've been doing so many premiums recently, plus the current, I think, premium thing that uh, I'm supposed to be reviewing is a carrier and I've had quite enough of carriers, to be honest. Uh, I figured I'm going to go through some more tech tree ships for starters because, uh, you know, everybody can, can play these easily without having to spend any money on them. And today we'll be looking at the Takao, the tier 8 Japanese tech tree cruiser. Now there is a premium Takao in, uh, in, in the game with the Maya. And I think I've reviewed that one, but I haven't actually uh, done this one because I was actually still grinding on the Miyoko myself. So this is, well, the tier 8 version of the whole thing. Now, uh, the Takao did exist, and she was actually a, what's it, like, think late 20s, late 1920s interwar design, was built in the 1930s, and was among the heaviest cruisers that the Japanese were fielding, with, at the time, probably the heaviest armament that you could find. They had 10 uh, 200 millimeter guns and 16 torpedo launchers on these things. Because, you know, the, the whole idea that the Japanese had before, well, before the war, really, was that they could defeat the Americans in a decisive battle, such that they would draw the whole American fleet into, into an engagement and then uh, sw uh, swamp the area with torpedoes in a night action from destroyers and from these cruisers, with long-range torpedoes. And the Japanese did have very, very good torpedoes at the time. And, uh, yeah, damage as much as they could. And then, uh, at first light, the heavies would come in and mop up the rest of whatever damaged fleet was, was remaining. And that, was, that would be that. And then the Americans would be out of the Pacific and Japan would reign supreme. It didn't work, obviously, as we all know. Uh, first of all, because, you know, it's always two, it always takes two people to do this. One of them to lay the trap and the other one to actually walk into it. And... Uh, in the end, no no plan ever survives contact with the enemy. So that whole thing didn't really happen, and carriers turned out to be a hell of a lot more useful than everybody thought they would gonna they was gonna be. So, uh, yeah, that that's a thing. Uh, which brings us back to the Takao, because she actually didn't have very much AA at all. These two hundred millimeter guns were supposed to be dual purpose, but um, the tracking a fast moving plane with these things is probably not gonna happen. And the, she's been upgraded from pretty much a token AA at the beginning to bristling with 25mm AA guns uh, towards the end of the war. And uh, she, was, she was busy in all kinds of engagements. So uh, she's, been, she's been busy in the big battles around Guadalcanal. She's been busy in the battles on the Philippines. In the end, she was torpedoed and uh, didn't dodge. <laughs> Because you know, just dodge. But uh, she was torpedoed while trying to, while trying to reach uh, to reach the Americans and uh, did survive, but was so damaged that she was put down as a floating aircraft platform, and um, that was the end of the ship eventually. So, uh, in game, what do we have? Uh, Japanese cruisers are a bit special. They're, they're not your typical heavy cruisers, in that you know. You use your armor piercing, deal with light cruisers, destroyers, all these kind of things. The high explosive on these ships is usually better. But uh, before we go anywhere, let's um, let's add this ship here and uh, probably add the uh, the tier seven, the Miyoko, just so we get a comparison and uh, can take can take a look on how they have progressed. So we've got an additional precise aiming, and honestly, the dispersion on the Takao is not great. So setting her up for dispersion is something that I can recommend. Uh, Takao gets more health than the Miyoko. Uh, technically, Takao did get more armor than Miyoko because that was one of the improvements they made from the preceding Miyoko class, but uh, we don't see that here other than in additional 4,000 hit points. Uh, she is almost to the dot as maneuverable as the Miyoko, but um, she ha her guns are better. So she's got better range, a little bit more damage, but other than that, it's very, very similar. Torpedoes is where the big difference lies, whereas the Miyoko gets 12 torpedoes, the Takao gets 16. Obviously side-mounted, but uh, with an 8.4 kilometer range, these are very, very good torpedoes. The reload has suffered, though, so in, in practice it's, 
uh, once again, quite comparable. The AA is a tuck better than on the Miyoko, but it's nothing to really write home about. And uh, the, the concealment is a little worse. So technically, um, this is a very, very slightly better Miyoko. Now, I like the Miyoko at tier 7 quite a lot. And I also like the Takao. Even though she is not much more powerful than the Miyoko, but really more of a, uh, of a natural progression. So what I've done here, equipment-wise, is uh, the turrets are good, and I, I'm rarely, relatively rarely lo losing them. So I'm actually using the main battery mod 2 here for a faster reload. And instead of the propulsion, I've got the steering in slot 2, and that's because this is a stealth build. I like building my Japanese cruisers for stealth, uh, similar to what you would do in a destroyer setup. And uh, that also gets reflected in the supplies, because instead of the uh, preventive maintenance, which gives more hit points, I'm actually using the high-grade coal for better surface detection. And that gets my ship down to a base surface detection of 7.2 kilometers. It's not destroyer level, but uh, it's definitely not bad. And uh, with an 8.4 kilometer torpedo range, I think it was 8.4, wasn't it? Uh, oops, that's the Miyoko. What am I talking about? No, the, there we go. Taco, 7.45. There we go, and torpedo range of 8.4. So you can technically stealth torpedo. But other than that, uh, you would usually use these ships to set fires uh, from range and in high maneuverable uh, scenarios. You don't want to sit still in these things. Because while the turret layout is sort of front concentrated, you've got three turrets in front, they are not super firing. The, the third turret, so the C turret, is sitting behind the B turret or underneath the B turret, really. So you do need to uh, you do need to angle in. And um, these ships are good at kiting and uh, good at just generally, you know, moving around a lot. <laughs> uh, what else? The elite bonus. You can choose between the cruiser modernization, which gives you more hit points, more AA, and a bit. Uh, main battery traverse or you can get the elite gun operator which gets the reload time down which i would thoroughly recommend and because these guns are good now while the torpedoes are great and you get a lot of them and you can use them tactically you know to just uh, flood areas with long range hard hitting torpedoes or you can use them on point uh, the guns are don't, uh, don't not to be underestimated and with this setup i'm getting the reload down to 10.6 seconds which isn't fast but um, it isn't particularly slow either, and especially in combination with the torpedoes, you know, uh, you can often do a very serious amount of damage. But just generally, I like these ships for the amount of firepower that they can dish out, which is quite fun. But they are different, very different from play, play style from one, say, hey, um, like a, a German ship. You can rush something in these things, and it's absolutely scary if you get rushed by a Takao. But you can't do it very often, because <laughs> they are nowhere near as sturdy. The uh, captain I've got he I've got in here. I have the underwater protection, the torpedo alert. I think we are getting. If I have a look at the tech tree, I think we are. Nope, not here. Here, I think we are getting. Was it on the Ibuki? Yeah, the the Ibuki gets a defensive AA, and so does the Zhao at tier ten. But um, they are not super maneuverable. And I really, they don't have a sonar, and I'd really prefer to have another. They're not AA ships, right? Uh, they can shoot down a couple of planes. The Maya is a different story, because she's an actual AA setup, sacrificing one of the guns for a much, much improved AA. But these things, not so much. So I'm not, I, I prefer to have a bit more of torpedo alerts if I need to de deal with destroyers. Uh, artillery maintenance, I do have the defensive, uh, the air defense expert in return. Uh, a survivalist because I don't really need an additional precise aim. It's also a precise aim one, so it's not going to make a huge huge amount of difference quite just yet. Uh, exploit weakness is something you definitely want to get on these ships because you're trying to set fires and flood things a, a lot. Marksman and obviously, and I've got the extinguisher here. You may as well play with say adrenaline rush. That's a very fair setup as well, and uh, take the daredevil instead of survivalist if you want to play it a little differently. So uh, all very very valid setups. You can get, if you're so inclined, want to keep the ship, the historical camouflage. This gives you a range of both the main battery and the torpedoes, which is very good. It gives you traverse speed, which is very nice. And it gives you surface detection improvements, which is also very, very good. So this is a great historical camo if you want to keep that. But we are tier 8 and it's 3,500 gold. So it's starting to get expensive. So as usual, I'm going to be playing with the Seaborn Assault. 
Right, so uh, tier 8 is where it can get difficult at times. And um, like I said, I, I like this ship because it, 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 it looks like a single purpose ship. It looks like a kite away, run away, um, like stealth torpedo sort of things. I like to play this a bit more aggressively and it is actually quite useful also with deal in uh, dealing with things like destroyers. So let's have a look at some gameplay. In the first round, we are playing Epicenter on Frozen Shelter, and I'm intentionally using Center Cup uh, uh, replays here because the one thing that you might be thinking in something like a Japanese ship, saying, well, 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 crap, what am I going to do with a long-range kiter that is good at running away from stuff in, in a Center Cup map? Well, uh, you can do a lot of things in these sort of scenarios. Anyway, we're up against, we're in a bottom tier battle, we're up against uh, Essex, Roma, Kutuzov, Shapayev, not another Shapayev, a Z46, and an Ognivoy. So let's get going. Uh, yeah, because of the stealth setup, you can do this. Because if you if you're uh, if you're spotted and the battleships start opening up on you, uh, the Takao might be better armored than the Miyoko, but it's nowhere near as near good enough to stop battleship shells, obviously. And they are rather large and inviting targets. But um, with the stealth build, you can get yourself into sneaky positions. Now, it is a carrier battle, so I'm assuming that I'm going to be spotted. So I'm going to be heading towards that island there, because that island gives me uh, enough cover to be, uh, to, to be able to, you know, uh, take, some, take some shots from each side and not be instantly deleted. Plus, I can actually help out with capturing the middle ring. Uh, plus, I have uh, gun angles at enemy destroyers. Now, the armor piercing on Japanese cruisers is usually pretty pretty meh. Um, I've, I've often had more success using the high explosive even at other cruisers and um, uh, against destroyers as well although there might be scenarios where the AP is is good enough against destroyers but I just haven't played enough yet to um, to see where the over penetration start on destroyers uh, and HE just doesn't over pen. So um, we are, have spotted Asha Payev, who's instantly going to start sh shooting at me, and uh, we're going to return the favor. But I am obviously now spotted, so I'm just dunking some tactical torpedoes in the general direction. And the Shapayev is a better HG spammer, but I have now bigger problems, because there is a Roma, which is extremely aggressive, coming around the flank here. So we're going to put her in full reverse and get shots out at the Roma. We also don't know... Oh, there is the Ognivoy. Okay, so full-on reverse was the right decision, because the Ognivoy is coming around here as well and is heading towards this whole area so let's get some shots out at the Ognivoy uh, taking some devastating fire there from the Roma yeah you gotta be really careful with these things but um, I've still got my torpedo launchers at the ready so uh, I am holding out because the Ognivoy seems to look like he wants to come around the corner so let's see if we can make him regret that life choice plus I have something else here I'm not sure what it is uh, there's uh, another cruiser behind me so we're getting out of the torpedo range. The Ognivoy is on fire. Oh, uh, sorry. Oh, it's a rune. Sorry for that. Um, yeah, rune takes out the Ognivoy. And I think he manages to dodge the torpedoes. Yeah, very sorry for being in your way there. But I am now broadsiding a Roma, which is unhealthy. So I do need to get out of there pronto. Uh, Roma is flooding. So uh, because he has taken a bunch of my torpedoes, he damaconed. So in 10 seconds, I can set him on fire. Now this is going to hurt if I'm unlucky. So full on turn. And that was mostly went through the superstructure because he misaimed, and I do need to get out of here. But we have gotten the, rid of the Ognivoy, and uh, that's always worth for starters. And do we get a fire? Yep, that's a perma fire on the Roma. At least we'll take it. No one is interested in the center cup in this game, so um, I figure, well, well, might as well do it. There's the Shapayev, but he is on relatively low health, so precise aim up and see if we can get him killed depending on which way he's turning. Okay, we've got the Roma, and I don't know where these shots went, but I, that's not where I was aiming. Uh, so there goes my, I was robbed of my double strike here, but that should be the end of the Shapayev. And there he goes. Okay, and we've got the center cup, plus we've got a Z46 and the other Shapayev. So destroyer obviously once again taking, uh, taking pre uh, precedence here. Uh, and I can just dunk some torpedoes in the general direction just in case somebody wants to come around here to just at least disturb them a little bit. Because the other thing that the uh, Takao is very good at is being fast. Uh, this is not a slow cruiser. You can you can uh, kite away from destroyers quite well. And let's see if the Z46 wants to come around here. After I'm once again grabbing the capture circles because nobody else can be bothered as usual. Uh, but... Um, 
Uh, but it looks it looks like most of my team is actually inside the cups and the Z46 comes around the corner Yeah, that is not a wise decision my friend. So um, shots out and I think he just turned Ah, yeah, so one more one more hit would have been it But um, I think uh, he's gonna be dead anyway because some uh, yeah, so the Donskoy takes him out Well done, and that just leaves that Shapayev over there plus the carrier so uh, Shapayev obviously sets me on fire and um, against something like a Shapayev, you'd think you'd think a broadsiding Shapayev, you'd, think you'd usually use armor piercing. But once again, I quite enjoy the high explosive on these. I have scored citadels with the high explosive. Uh, Shapayev is a bit faster than that, so I am going to have to lead a bit more. But um, also the fires are sort of where it's at. Now, uh, we, we've won this battle pretty comprehensively. I think we've only lost one destroyer so far. And uh, if the Shapayev would hold still for a second, it'll all be over soon. But um, then it's just the enemy carrier left. But uh, yeah, what, what I was saying about the stealth setup is that it allows, it, it gives you more, come on, it gives you more options for the gameplay. It, uh, it allows you to, um, it allows you to, to take positions and Rune takes them out, nicely done. Allows you to take positions that you would, uh, that you would normally not rush in a, in a cruiser, in a bottom tier cruiser. Because uh, of the, uh, and yes, it was a carrier game, so I couldn't quite do what I wanted to do. But uh, if it's not, especially if it's not a carrier game, you can get away with quite a fair bit of aggressive positioning, and use your torpedoes early on to push things away or to punish uh, to punish ships that are not quite expecting it. So I'm, uh, yeah, uh, this is just gonna. There's nothing happening anymore, so I'm just gonna forward to the end here. And we're coming out on top of the team. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks thanks to the Roma for selling broadside on to people. But um, uh, yeah, uh, and 300, 300 team play points for sitting inside the capture circles the whole game. In a Japanese cruiser, you can do this. But yeah, um, a well played to the rest of my team as well. This was, a, uh, this was a pretty comprehensive spanking that the enemy team has taken there. So let's do that again. And in the second battle, we are in what I think is a flat out tier 8 battle, is it? Uh, I think it is. And we're in the infamous, in the one and only Golden Channel Center Control. So once again, Japanese cruisers not particularly suited to this sort of thing. Because if you're stationary, you bow in something like that, you don't have the armor to do that, and you can't get your guns to bear. You can't get your torpedoes to bear forward. I mean, the angles are not quite as dreadful as they were in the Miyoko. But they are better in a in, in a mobile position, and this is once again why I, why I like the stealth build, because uh, it allows me to do these things. So what are we going to do here? Uh, traditionally, you would take like the, cor the the right side corner of that island straight ahead from me. I'm not quite going to do that. So what I'm what I'm expecting here is that um, there's going to be well, you know, I've got an AFK Benson, great. Uh, there's going to be a lot of ships. Uh, you know, coming in between these two islands on the other side, and I want to see if I can sneak around the other side of the island, which doesn't get me into the capture circle immediately. And uh, but I want to see if I can sneak around and maybe get some sneaky torpedoes off. And uh, I'm not, I'm not straying very far from the capture circle. I can always dip in when I'm needed. But uh, for now, I just want to see if I can poke around here. Uh, there's one battleship. I'm not going to start shooting at it because I want to see if I can up. Uh, where the other ones are. There are two battleships out there. There's the North Carolina. There are destroyers in there. And I can't outspot them. Yeah, there's the Benson, but the Benson shouldn't be able to see me. So maybe I can get this. I can. Oh, and no, I'm detected. Uh, there's something there. Yeah, it's the Aki. Okay. So I'm going to drop torpedoes in the general direction of the Aki and then get him. Yeah, he smokes up. Okay, he's scared. But um, is he going to sit still in his smoke? That's what I want to know. And that was a nasty hit there from the battleship roll when I was turning. Yeah, I was kind of hoping that I could get to torpedo these guys. But uh, this is the way we turn around and um, set fires and do kinds of things. And that's a dead Akizuki. <laughs> I know how tempting it is from, from personal experience to just, you know, sit there. But now we're just dunking some more torpedoes in the general direction and we've just send 16 torpedoes into the capture circle, the Akizuki is dead, and I think that, what was it, the Benson on our side has just done the smart thing as well. Given that the Akizuki was gone, he could just sail through there and um, dunk all his torpedoes into the Vladivostok, which means the Vladivostok is now going to either die to my torpedoes, or if I'm going to get him with the guns first, we will see. But that takes care of one destroyer and one battleship, 
and puts the enemy, uh, we're holding the cup, and oh, the North Carolina takes him out. Okay, and there's the Kansas. Kansas seems to be shooting, no, he's not shooting at me, she's, he's shooting at a Benson. But we're holding the capture circle, so now I can get into the more traditional position. And I'm just, you know, at long range and see what that North Carolina is going to do. He doesn't look at me, so we'll just start sinking some shots into him. But I'm keeping my distance, because uh, in a Japanese cruiser you do not wish to be close to enemy battleships. Unless, you know, they're not paying attention and you can torpedo them. Okay, there's the Benson spotted. We are about to lose the capture circle again. But um, it's there will be torpedoes in the water, so I am going to have to sit. And I'm taking fire from the left. Not sure what it is, but uh, it might be the Kansas still. Uh, yeah, there come the Benson torpedoes. So, um, uh, and so we're just going to be sitting here for now. We'll let these pass, and then we're going to get back into the capture circle. I'll heal up a little bit more. And uh, I think all these people have different problems. And uh, they're trying to shoot at the destroyer in our destroyer in the capture circle, so we can get some more shots out. And then once again, uh, we're going to help cap, uh, help grabbing the cup and just dunking torpedoes into the general direction of everybody out there. There is Cleveland. I'm going to get him priority targeted because he's the, the bigger danger for the Benson. So we do some damage to him, set him on fire, and it looks like he doesn't want to be there. So he's running away. Uh, the Kansas is going to run into my torpedoes, maybe, if he's not dead before. So let's just shoot at him. And, uh, oh, ow, that was the Kansas, yeah, that hurt. And there's another Benson coming around the other side. So we've got the capture circle secured. And um, we don't, yeah, you, he, you would have been useful inside the capture circle, but he decided to flank around, which is not generally a helpful idea. So now that we can see, he's, he's after that black and uh, NC there on our side. So let's see if we can get the ruffle stop middle and save the NC. Uh, precise aim out, shots out, but I think he just started turning. Yeah, he's just getting ready for the torpedo turn, I think. Uh, NC is bow in, so he should be fine. And uh, I'm just going to start slowing down right here, so, cause, uh, just in case he sends the torpedoes my way, and then send my... Oh, okay, my Benson's probably going to run into my torpedoes, because he's got the same idea. But that's okay, some of them will get through still. And yeah, there come the enemy torpedoes. They were aimed at me, and uh, I can easily dodge those and do some nasty damage against the Benson and then North Carolina takes him out so that's that thing down. Unfortunately we've lost the destroyer of our own so once again no ruffle stop medal but we're getting close and at this point there's just that Kansas which was somewhere behind the island and that Cleveland over there. The battleships are going to kill the Cleveland. He's got no way of catching the capture circle. So at this point um, I don't need to stay at the capture circle but I can actually go and find that Kansas. Now he can either come around this way in which case I'm going to torpedo him or he can come around the other way in case uh, Benson gets to torpedo him. So let's see who let's see who gets to kill the Kansas. Uh, Where is Benson going? Benson is going right so I'm going to stay left and um, we'll, we'll see we'll see who finds him first. Uh, Come on, come out, come out, wherever you are. You can run, but you cannot hide. There he is. Okay, and he's going the other side. So Benson gets to shoot, uh, gets to get him. So let's start distracting the Kansas. Maybe uh, he doesn't pay attention. Now he sees the Benson, apparently. And um, yeah, from this uh, from this range, even the Benson shouldn't be able to miss. And we, we're just going to be sh uh, shooting at the Kansas and set, tr trying to set fire, such that he can get a perma flood. Maybe. I mean, we are spotted now, so. Uh, uh, Benson's still on the run-up. I'm not sure what he's waiting for. I mean smoke maybe and then get torpedoes away Maybe he doesn't have torpedoes ready. Then why are you rushing the battleship if you don't have torpedoes ready? Well, now he's dead. <laughs> okay, so much for that theory uh, All right, then I mean we're still one because while well, the Cleveland yeah the, the uh, Bismarck takes out the Cleveland at point-blank range I have no idea what the Cleveland was trying to do rolling a Bismarck, but that doesn't go well I'm gonna drop some torpedoes in case the Kansas comes back but uh, most likely the Kansas is just going to keep shooting at me. And uh, just one more heal. I just don't want to die. <laughs> I want to see if we can farm more, some more damage on the Kansas. Uh, I've still got a minute, but he's the last ship alive, so there's no, everyone's going to be shooting at him. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to be... I'm not going to... Even, even if it is a Kansas and he's not particularly fast, I don't think I'm going to be catching him because he's got too much... Uh, too much headway and he's just gonna be dead before I get there and I think my torpedoes yeah, they just run out yeah he's just a little bit too far away but uh, that's all right um, we can still get some gunshots in it's slowing down maybe because he's seen my torpedoes I mean he's not particularly fast to begin with and this mark takes the win but we've all done we've racked our damage up to 72,000 which is uh, respectable for um, for a tier 8 game I f uh, in a cruiser I feel so yeah, this is the sort of thing you can do in the Takao. It's not a an anti-DD ship, as, as most cruisers are. It does have relatively low utility against destroyers. What it can do, though, is use the torpedoes in a 
like in a, in a tactical manner just to uh, to swamp certain areas and deny certain areas and don't underestimate the broadside of 10 203 millimeter guns firing high explosive at destroyers uh, which can get which can have really nasty consequences for them as well so definitely a ship i'm enjoying with the stealth setup you could play her purely as a long range kiter and and he bomber Although the uh, things like the, the Soviet light cruisers are probably better at that role, um, but you do have the, the additional benefit of torpedoes. So if you play at torpedo range and get somebody to chase you and then just dunk torpedoes into them, left, right and center, that's a, that's a good thing you can do as well. But I personally prefer the stealth setup for a bit more flexibility and allowing me to do more aggressive moves like what I was just showing you. So yeah, that's the taco. I like this ship. And I'm going to continue going up, and I eventually will have to review the Zhao as well. I'm probably going to do it on press because I'm not going to get it anytime soon. But yeah, that's coming up at some point. Anyway, that's it for me today. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.